Hey y'all, my name is Travis Lee, and today we're going to be walking through the QuickBooks desktop integration. We have a really handy graphic on our front end website that shows the information that's going to be sending back and forth, but the basic idea is that the invoices and bills you create within JobTread will create a copy over in QuickBooks with the pertinent customer and vendor information. And when those become paid over in QuickBooks, that would reflect back in JobTread as well. Another thing we send is the employee time. So if you're using time tracking within JobTread, those hours can port over to QuickBooks too. So how do we set it up? Uh, in your settings, under integrations, click on QuickBooks desktop, and then just follow the instructions included here. But I do want to highlight how this integration is different from others. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to connect with a piece of software on someone's computer that doesn't have the capability of speaking to the internet. And that's why with the QuickBooks desktop integration, you have to download the separate program called the QuickBooks Web Connector, which is the bridge that allows these two systems to sync. So um, to start, download this QWC file. That's the QuickBooks Web Connector file. It should open up uh, the Web Connector automatically. But if you want a more detailed version of these steps, I recommend going into the help desk and going under searching for desktop. And then this will show you line by line, but actually a preview of what you're going to see over on the QuickBooks side as well. So essentially, you're going to open the file. You're going to authorize the use of it. It's going to ask you to input a password. That's going to be over on the integrations page. We'll provide that password after you do this authorization step. And then it's going to ask you to input that password. The web connector looks something like this. So you're going to have this window pulled up. JobTread will be listed as an application. And then this is where you'll input the password. So when you're ready for it to sync, you would make sure the application is selected and you would say update. You can also have it auto run on the back end. For this to work, you have to have QuickBooks open as well as the web connector. Otherwise, this auto run is not going to process. So a lot of people just turn this off and they just click update when they're ready to look at the books. But this is up to you and you can set the duration if you want to do that auto run option. But updating that uh, should run along the bottom and show you that it works. We're 100% uh, successful. And then again, those invoices and bills that are new would have been sent over to QuickBooks. And also, again, you know, things that are paid in QuickBooks, that payment status would reflected job trade as well, and the hours would port over too. If for whatever reason there's an issue, um, it may be a simple thing like the QuickBooks version or the web connector is out of date. So we always recommend starting by making sure that QuickBooks and the web connector are up to date because that could be part of the problem. If that doesn't solve your issue, I just want to highlight this view log button in the top right. This is where we can see errors. And so if we uh, look at the logs, that's where we can detail exactly what's happening when the sync happens. But one caveat to this is that the default version of the log is called debug. We really need the, this to be changed to verbose because it provides us a lot more detail so we can troubleshoot exactly what's going on. To change that setting, it's going to be in this help desk article here at the bottom. It walks through the specific steps to change that setting to verbose. And when you do that, and you run the update again on the web connector, that will provide us the more detailed version of the error so we can help you troubleshoot the problem. But that's the basic gist of how it works. The last step, once you get this set up, is going to be mapping your cost codes to your QuickBooks items. When that process is complete, then you're totally up and running at that point. To show you a preview of what that looks like, I'm actually going to skip over and show you the online integration. But the idea is the same with desktop. Here along the left hand side, we have our cost codes as they're stored within JobTread. On the right hand side, you have your QuickBooks items. In QuickBooks Desktop, they call them items. QuickBooks Online, they call them the products and services. But the items are what map to the income and expense accounts. So we want to map the codes over to the QuickBooks items so when it hits QuickBooks, it knows how to classify it properly. And to explain these cost codes real quick, I'm going to skip into the catalog and just click on one of these items here. Notice we have an item name and then we have this kind of back end accounting code. The codes are what speak to QuickBooks, right? So you might have 50 pieces of lumber as different cost items in the system, but all of which would be tied to one cost code called framing material, for example. So these codes can be customized as needed. So under settings and job costing, you can customize them here. We can also help you run an import. If you wanted to import all your QuickBooks items into the cost code list, we should be able to help you out with that. Um, but the idea is you get those cost codes in here, then we'll do the mapping to make sure, okay, all these cost codes align with these QuickBooks items. 
Um, and again, that will help make sure everything goes to the right place when the integration is set up. One thing I'll highlight is at the top is the default. You have a default in case more cost codes are added in time and things aren't uh, mapped properly. Everything will fall back to whatever the default is here. We would recommend keeping it to something like uncategorized or something along those lines. So when it comes across to QuickBooks, it would read uncategorized and you would know, hey, there's an issue with the mapping. We need to go make an update within the job tread integration settings. So um, that's the basic gist. The web connector is the key to make this all work. That's where you're gonna run the sync so the information will flow back and forth. If you have any questions about this, please let us know. Feel free to reach out to support at jobtread.com or reach out to your CS rep. Thanks so much.